it's Reija and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my favorite books of 2019. So these are the books that I read in 2019 and absolutely loved. And funnily enough, some of them weren't initially five-star reads when I read them, but these are the books that have stuck with me, have been enjoyable reads and have just made me learn something about the world or about myself and I just think that these will have a lasting impact on my reading. So it's, um, it is a combination of initial enjoyment versus lasting impressions. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> So I have 10 books to talk about and the first book I want to mention is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I listened to this on audio, I think I read this in May I want to say and it was really good, the audio narration was wonderful. I liked that there were different voice actors for like the different point of views and I just liked the story, I liked I liked this sort of fictional memoir going down memory lane and um, just having this uh, story about this really ruthless, uh, uncompromising character, uh, Evelyn Hugo, and the story of her life. And it had one of the best bisexual representation that I have personally read, and it was um, very nicely done in that this book talks about bi erasure and biphobia within the LGBTQ plus community and the character of Evelyn is just um, unapologetically bisexual and she really like um, talks about all of her conquests and all of her loves and like in an equal way and I, and I like that, I like that a lot and it's set during like the Hollywood golden era and the like uh, big movie glow ups and stuff and I really like that. I, I like those sort of things. Maybe because it's like I have a very uh, a fondness for like old Hollywood movies and like old movies in general so I really like that aspect. So Evelyn Hugo takes the number 10 spot. Number 9 on my list is Radium Girls by Kate Moore and this is another um, Re really gripping tale and this is a non-fiction story about the women who worked as dial painters in these uh, radium dial companies and uh, painted these uh, luminous clocks which then f caused them to get sick and uh, they started basically dying and some of these women took charge and um, sued the companies in question and because of their efforts the laws regarding the use of radium and uh, safe working conditions were like updated and they made it safe for other workers and other women uh, who then go on to take on hazardous jobs like this and uh, I really liked it. Uh, it was very poignant, it was very emotionally told. Uh, you could tell that Kate Moore had a vested interest in this story and uh, she narrates the audiobook herself so uh, you could really hear it in her voice when um, she narrates the story because some of these women uh, were people that she interviewed and she interviewed their like relations and stuff so uh, you really hear it in her like voice and delivery and I really liked this uh, book a lot and it was hard and gut-wrenching to listen to it at times but I think that the content is so um, important. Uh, it's important to know this kind of history so that we never forget it. Number eight spot on my list is Ancillary Justice by Anne Leckie. This is a science fiction space opera um, that talks about empire and lasting empires and also it's a story about an underdog going against this huge um, huge empire and what that means and how can one single person 
how can one entity um, make such uh, a decision basically and how and how can that happen it's a revenge story it's also sort of like a love story in a sense like not not like a romantic love but of platonic love um, it's it's a story about personhood because the character of Breck is an AI that used to have multiple bodies and used to be a ship but is now uh, confined into a single body and it talks about like what even like what even is humanity and what is a person and uh, this this year I really liked those sort of stories the stories that dealt with personhood and identity and uh, I really loved this story for it. Number seven on my list this year is The Traitor Baru Cormorant by Seth Dickinson. We won't go into the sequel. You probably have heard me talk about it to death, uh, how I didn't exactly like the sequel. But The Traitor Baru Cormorant, the first book, was so good. It was amazing. It made me be invested in something so tedious and mundane as economics and um, and uh, how economics can be used to um, basically manipulate politics and warfare. And it's a story about colonialism, it's also a sort of revenge story and how, how that sort of like... Um, when a foreign power comes and takes your homeland and you're then raised um, as a model citizen for that foreign power, how that changes your um, identity and how difficult it is to keep maintaining your own culture in the face of like all the advancements that that foreign power brings you. It's, it's, it's a look at that conflict within you um, like wanting liberation for your people, but also wanting the uh, benefits of what that colonial power has brought. But also it's about bitterness and it's about uh, hope. And I just loved that book. It was so much fun. And it was also very heartbreaking and awful. But... Like, in my core, it's probably gonna be one of my favorite books of all time forever. It's just sad that I didn't like the second book that much. I am gonna read the third one, and I am going to keep continuing on in the series because I want to know if the second book was just a fluke. Anyway, anyway, we're, we're talking about the first book. We're talking about The Traitor Baru Cormorant, which was great. I really enjoyed it. One of my favorite books of 2019. Moving on to number six spot, we have Solaris by Stanislav Lem. This is another book that talks about sort of identity and personhood, but it also talks about intelligence and what it means to be a sentient being. This uh, it takes, it takes place on a planet called Solaris, where the scientists are um, working on this uh, space station that's... Um, that's kind of hovering above Solaris, where where the there's like this huge alien ocean that can manipulate its like structure, and the scientists are trying to mm, determine whether the ocean is sentient, and and are trying to make contact with it. And it's about like communication, and it's about trauma, and it's about memory. And there's also interesting themes here about what makes up a person. Like, if I remember a friend of mine in a certain way, and that friend was then constructed based on my memory, would that person still be my friend? Would that person still be the same person? Because I have a bias, and I can't fully know the inner thoughts of that person. There, there are interesting... Um, themes in this book. I will say though that my rating of this should be taken with a little bit of a grain of salt because I have since reading this heard that the particular translation that I have read was not um, appreciated by the author and uh, 
I want to get my hands on the radio play that was um, done on a different uh, translation and maybe in a later date I will make a video um, talking about the different um, translation aspects and stuff. Uh, in the meantime, you know what I think about uh, misrepresent misrepresentation uh, in translation. I will leave my discussion about translation practices and translation in the cards above and in the description so, it, so you can uh, have my full thoughts about those uh, things. But in any case, I really enjoyed Solaris and would recommend it. Number five on my list is Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb. I loved this book. It was gut-wrenching, it was um, it was gripping, it was heartbreaking, um, it was frustrating because Fitz makes so many dumb decisions in this book, but at the same time those decisions then make him grow into the person that he is going to be and uh, there are some of my favorite character moments in this. We see more of Fitz's relationship with the Fool, we see more of his relationship with Ketriken and, um, and Patience and Lacey and Molly and Burri. Oh my god, his relationship with Burri and also with Shade brings me to tears sometimes. This was just such a fantastic read. Uh, Robin Hobb is excellent when it comes to character building and also her world feels fully realized and there are these um, sort of like excerpts uh, starting every chapter where she uh, sort of goes over some of the concepts uh, of this world, some of the magic system aspects and stuff that were one of my favorite parts. I always wanted to know some of that context going in. And yeah, um, if you are not uh, uh, clued in to Realm of the Elderlings, I would highly recommend starting it. And this book was basically what made me realize that I am reading a fantastic series. So would highly recommend Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb. Number four on my list is Becoming by Michelle Obama. I think this book needs no further introduction. It is a memoir of Michelle Obama and I listened to the audio and Michelle Obama narrates the audio herself and it was just a wonderful experience to listen to her talk about her life, some of the struggles that she went through, her um, experiences with racism and the systemic bias that's in the United States educational and political system and also the legal system and it's just a wonderful book that gives context to um, the current political climate in the United States and also kind of gives some insights into the Barack Obama presidency through Michelle Obama's eyes. I really enjoyed it. Um, I chose some of Michelle Obama's quotes to sort of have quotes to live by this year because they were so profound and made uh, an impression on me. So. Uh, this book has really left uh, a lasting impression and I really liked it, so would recommend. Number three on my list is Semiosis by Sue Burke. Now, some of you are probably not surprised you've heard me praise this book in multiple videos. I really loved the premise of this. I loved that there is a sentient plant that's the main character that basically makes humans uh, its service animals and it's about uh, building new societies, it's about communication, miscommunication and language and uh, intelligence and I love it, I love it with all my being and I am glad to report just on the offhand that interference was almost as good and just as entertaining. But yeah, Semiosis by Zuberg is one of my favorite books of this year as well. Number two on my list is A Closed and Common Orbit by Becky Chambers. Now, this is another book that I have raved about this year. I loved it. I gave it five stars. I think so far it is the best Becky Chambers book that I have read. I love the whole communication aspect. I loved that this, like, 
investigates humanity and what makes us human, what makes us individuals, um, what constitutes uh, what constitutes an identity. I love that it's explored through an AI character and a human character and also various aliens, but it, this is just wonderful. And it talks about like how in this society AI aren't treated as human and how some AI still they have identities, they have personalities and they they are more human than some other humans who are humans and who have human rights. And it is sort of like um, this, like Sidra's um, story is juxtaposed against Pepper's story, who's, who was basically a manufactured human slave in a human run planet where the humans were more monstrous and more inhumane than the AI who have no human rights. Get what I'm saying? Like, I I love this book so much. I I love the parallels. I love the themes. Like, this is probably going to be one of those books that I will, like, shove into everyone's face and make them read it. And I just... Ah, I love it. And I want to reread it someday. Maybe when I've read the last Wayfarer books, book that's out right now, I will... I will then probably go back and read this again. It's it was such a such a treat. And finally, we are on the number one spot and the number one book of 2019. My favorite book of 2019 is actually quite a bit of a surprise to me as well. And that is A Memory Called Empire by Arkady Martin. This book I know it's not perfect. I know it has some flaws. There are some pacing issues and the mystery is not always as tightly packed uh, as it should be. But the characters are wonderful. The world building is amazing. And for a debut, this is such a polished, uh, complete work. I loved it. This is about an ambassador, Mahit Desmare, who um, has to take on a job after her predecessor in the heart of this huge empire, Texcalan, um, like, gets killed in, like, mysterious circumstances. And she has this imago of her predecessor, which uh, allows her to have his memories and his experience as she takes on this new job. Um, and this has, again, one of those themes of cultural imperialism and how, what it feels like to be in a sort of, in a small minority culture, in a, st in a strategically important place, trying to hold on to your independence in the face of a huge empire that's basically trying to consume you assume you from within uh, by means of um, exporting culture and uh, like pop culture and uh, sort of that like I just loved it it, it brought to mind uh, my own views of like Finland's uh, relationship with uh, the United States in terms of like cultural impact and such it just there's so much to love in this book and it's super queer and I I loved it I like, I'm just going to gush about it if I don't stop. So this was my favorite book of 2019. I also nominated it for the Best Novel Hugo category. I Let's see how it does there. But yeah, my favorite book of 2019. And there you have it. These are all of my favorite books from 2019. And tell me in the comments, have you read any of these books? Were they some of your favorites? And were you surprised by any of the entries on this list? If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And I will see you in the next one very soon. Bye bye!